All right, the big idea for this question is common misconceptions or common mistakes. Common misconceptions or common mistakes. One of the best ways to help students learn a new skill and get confident with it and get proficient with it is to kind of expect where they might make mistakes and anticipate where they're going to make the mistakes. So that way, if they make those mistakes that you anticipated, you could help understand that that's what's happening and then help to correct the understanding and fix the misconception. So here's an example of that. If a student does 25 minus 18 and gets 13, and then they try 85 minus 58 and they get 31, well, certainly if you solve this problem, you'll see that it's not 13. And if you solve this problem, you will see that it's not 31. But knowing that they got it wrong is not good enough to really help that student. You have to know why did they get it wrong? What mistake were they getting? Because this student might get frustrated, say, and think to themselves, well, I'm doing these problems, but I keep on getting them wrong, and why? And uh, as, the, as the teacher, you've got to help them understand, well, here's the mistake you're making, and so next time, try to look out for that to avoid that same mistake. Now, maybe you could see the mistake they're making. Maybe they're having trouble finding out what they're doing, because what we have to do is figure out if they were, if they were going to continue to make the same mistake, what would they think that the answer for 42 minus 38 is if they make the same mistake that they've made in these two examples? If you, didn't, if you don't see what their mistake is, try, try writing it this way. 25 minus 18. And keep in mind the answer they got was 13. Maybe write this one this way. 87 minus 58. All right, so can you see uh, this student maybe got a three in the ones place and a one in the tens place, which again is not the right answer, but can you see how they would think that that's the answer, how they got that answer? Can you see how the same student and the ones place would get a one here and get a three here thinking the answer is 31? I think it's a lot more obvious when you look at it written this way than when it's written the horizontal way. And if you think about the algorithm, how you do the ones place first, then you go to the tens place using the algorithm, you might see what's happening. All right, so if you identified that this student, maybe they're not proficient at regrouping or borrowing, so maybe they just see the subtraction sign. And so they're thinking, well, if I subtract five from eight, eight minus five is three. And then if I subtract two minus one, well, that equals one. That's exactly what's happening. They're not regrouping. Uh, they're not using borrowing. All they're doing is thinking about the operation of subtraction, but not really thinking how it applies to these specific numbers. For example, you can't really subtract seven, take away eight. You would need to use regrouping. But this student is seeing the subtraction symbol, and they're actually thinking, what is eight subtract seven? That's one. So they're not regrouping. They're just subtracting the numbers in any, in any order, uh, which is not okay to do for this problem. And then they're saying, what is eight take away five? That's three. So if they were to make that same mistake in this one, let's write it out this way, 42 minus 38. So if we're helping students understand the algorithm, we would tell them, well, you can't do two minus eight. You've got to do regrouping. You've got to do borrowing. Uh, but again, this student is going to make that same exact mistake. It's a common mistake that they're going to make. They are not going to regroup and uh, solve this the correct way. What digit will they put in the ones place? And what digit will they put in the tens place? Okay, so instead of regrouping to uh, make this larger to take away eight, what they're going to do is simply eight take away two. Eight take away two is six. And then four take away three is one. This student is going to think this answer is 16. All right, so that's the common misconception. That's gonna to lead to that incorrect answer. Of course, none of these are actually right. <laughs> But if the student keeps getting these answers, you could be one step ahead of them and you could expect and anticipate the mistake they're gonna make. So then you could help uh, sit down with that student and kind of talk about what they're doing and maybe how to do it correctly. And then uh, if they can identify their own mistake, they'll know to look out for it in the future as well. So uh, you usually don't learn anything from getting it right. You actually learn from making mistakes. So you make these mistakes and then the light bulb goes off and you go, oh, I get it. And then you know what to watch out for so you don't continue to make those same mistakes. And that's what we're doing right here.